for Photoshop is the world's leading photo editing software. It can be used to create anything you can imagine. You can use it to retouch photos, create graphics, even design websites and you know animated videos. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you the basics of Photoshop and I'll teach you how to open and edit images, how to use different tools and how to create some basic effects. Alright guys, so when you open your Photoshop, this is what you get to see. And this interface that you are seeing now is dependent on the version of Photoshop which we are using. So this version is um, Photoshop CC 2023. So um, in this module, this um, tutorial is divided into um, seven modules. So in each of the modules, we are going to be having a specific topic which again we are talking about. So for this module one, we are going to be talking about the interface, right? So you know, we are going to be discussing about Photoshop interface, we talk about the toolbar, the options bar, the panels, and so much more. And then we have the customizing the work and workspace for efficiency. So now let me just you know jump right in now. So when you open Photoshop, this is what you have. So let me just try to open a new file. Then we'll talk about this later. So let me just open a new file so that we can get to just go into Photoshop. All right, so this is what you get to see when you open Photoshop. So to be able to understand Photoshop very well, Photoshop has a way you know, at which you can get most of the tools which you are going to be using to work effectively. So and we have the toolbar. So the toolbar is you know what you can see right here. Let me just try to highlight. So this is where you have the toolbar, right? So you have the toolbar here. And then if you take note that in each of the toolbars, when you click on it, it you know shows you and what's it called the um, command at which you can quickly navigate to whatever toolbar you want to use. So and then on Photoshop again, we have the you know the options bar here. Yeah, so you have the options bar. You have file. You have you know edit image layer type depending on where you are going. Let's say um you know I want to do anything on this. So let me just you know open the picture so that would be easy for us to you know to move around with so let me just drag the picture in so that I can be able to see so from this menu right we have the edit we have the image we have and depending on what you want to do so you might just decide to just you know use the filter you know apply a kind of filter that's you know you want to use so in this part right we're actually going to be talking more on each of the filters and then and be able to know what you can use each one of them to do so now so this is where we have so you have the toolbar you can also undock the toolbar you can see when you click on this right you can undock it right so you can choose to move it to this part but you know it's best kept at the left hand side and you can choose to do whatever you want to do based on your own preferences so that's why it's called the work fit work on and what's it called so that you can be able to you know do whatever you want so you can customize your workspace and then choose whatever style you want to do so now i'm going to be docking this back into where it's supposed to be you can see when you're about to dock it back you can see the blue icon so i'll just leave it so it's going to dock back to where it was before and so we have the you know we have the uh, panel here so we have the yes yeah, so you can see that this my own is actually customized so all these things are not you know where it was before so that is why you can choose to customize your own based on your preferences so but i'll try to just reset my workspace so that i can be able to walk you through what you get to see so let me just um you know reset essential so when you reset essential when you come to window so let me highlight this when you come to window and then you come to workspace you can come to reset essentials so this is going to reset you know my let me just drag and bring my image here so you can just see that you know from the default view of essentials this is what you have you understand so this is you know the history and panel where you get to see all the actions we've performed before so we get to this more later so this is you know what you have you have the colors swatches gradients when you click on them each one of them you can see you know what each of the and um, options it has so you see the properties tab you have the adjustments you have the libraries so libraries is just like a cloud where uh, you know and uh, uh, photoshop provides you to you know 
save some images on the cloud and then you can get to use them later on so now from all these bars from all these you know uh, panels now you can choose to undock any one of them so if you click let me i like this part so if you click and drag this now you can see that i've undocked a layer right and sometimes probably you might not know and then you do this unknowingly so let me just try to undock as many as possible right it's just like you know a kind of mistake some people make getting started on photoshop and then you are trying to navigate on you know i want to put this back how should i do it how should i do that so what you need to do is just you know when you come back to window when you go to window you have the workspace right so you can see that even your essentials you know is get selected so there are many workspace which you can choose from we have the 3d make sure you trade is different from what you have on essential so depending on what you're working on with timing you know what you want to do but basically it's best to just leave it at essentials and then you can customize how you want your you know your interface to look like so now what i need to do is just to come to this reset essentials so when you click on reset essentials you see that all what you've undock you know of the bars have come back to its default position so uh depending on what you are doing depend on what you're working on depend on you know how you want your photoshop to be you can choose to customize you know your menu as you want so um so let me come to the layers panel from here you see the layers panel if you notice this is you know our image you can see here on the layers panel that we have our image so this is mostly like you know when you are getting started on photoshop right and you know when you're becoming a professional so these are part of where you use the most layers you understand so layers is you know what every every works you're making everything you're doing is going to be on layers in photoshop so let me just say if i want to create a new layer now so let me drag this and let's say i want to create a new layer now so i can just come to you know click on create new layer here so you can see that i've added a new layer on top of my background layer so i don't need this for now so we are still talking about the you know the panels and then you can be able to navigate and then you can customize depending on what you need and what you want so um as you can see so and um, if i'm going to read so sometimes let's say for instance now you make a mistake on these layers now and then you closed it not even that you forgot or you on um, and mistakenly undocked one of the panels so if you close the layers panel now so what you need to do is that your layers can still be activated so you can come to window and then you can from this list of options you can find any of the layers or any of the panels you've mistakenly closed or you don't know how it went off you can see that layers it says so when i click on layers you can see that i have forgotten back my layer do you understand and the reason why it's not docking to this part is because I undocked it first before closing so you just need to click on these layers and then drag it back to any parts of where you want it so I will just take it back to where it was before you can see here now so I've undocked I've docked the um, layers panel back to where it was and you can also click and drag to have the panel to wherever you want to set it so you know this is where you can be able to customize so in my own case i always love to you know have my layers because it's mostly where as a designer where i use my layers i use you know sometimes you might have up to 20 30 layers right and then you can be able to navigate but looking at what what you have here you see that there is no so when i click you know keep adding layers you see that i will need to you know scroll down to be able to see all layers that i have added before so and if should in case i want to be able to see much of these layers i prefer to just undock this layer now right so and then you can once let me just highlight this part you can drag this to the bottom or from you know and then you know you can just drag to the bottom to be able to see more of the added layers so this is part of what i always do in my own workspace as you saw before so and then you know i can just take these layers now and then choose to dock it somewhere around there you can see so any part that you see that you are trying to dock a layer and it's showing blue means that that is the part you are going to drop it so i'm going to be dropping it here you can see now 
so this is where i have my layers do you understand so you see that this space now you can actually minimize the spaces between this part you can see you can minimize the spaces between your dock layers so you can choose to you know scale it you know back so once you click at the center of any of the dock layers you can click and drag left or right so uh that is it for you know working on you know choosing your preferences of um and interfaces choosing your work uh, workspace and then for how much more you want to use photoshop or what you want to do on photoshop with you know be dependent on what workspace you want to keep and then what workspace works for you the best so and uh, that is it for the you know and um, on workspace part so now we're going to be moving on to um and the part which talks about the toolbar so what you can see here are toolbars so you just like two set of you know and and tools which you can use to perform a specific action so you know we have uh the move tool so when you let me just i like this part so when you over around any of the on um, of the tools you'll be able to see more options on it so you can see that when you click on this now i'm not clicking on the needs right so when you highlight on it you'll be able to see what it does and photoshop does a great job by even showing you and a picture a give of what each of the tools does so when you over around this you have the rectangular marquee too and you can be able to see from the view here what you can be able to do with it so let me just move into talk about the move move to so let's say let me just delete these layers so what i just did was just selecting the layers and then holding down my shift and clicking on the part at which i want to delete here and just pressing my backspace to take them off so um what i'm going to be doing now is just to add something to this part now so let's say you know i will make use you know of brush now so what i did was pressing the command b so when you over around here you'll be able to see brush too and there's a command here uh let me highlight you can see the command here is b so when anytime you're working and then you want to quickly navigate to any of the tools you can use the command so this is my brush now so i'm just going to scale so when you choose the brush tool you have options here so part of the options here you know is what you can do to your brush so when you click on this arrow yeah you can be able to see the brush which is at work now so or you can as well right click on the image and it will show you this panel so what i'm going to do is that i'm using this soft brush and then with hardness of zero so once i turn up the hardness so it's not going to be blurry as it is before so let me just look so you can see that once once i had so sorry my opacity is set to um 30 so this is where you set the opacity of the brush i will change it to 100 percent so now let me just try to just paint around which you can see now so i'm just i just want to use this to explain the move to so let me just go back to the move to so what this move to does is that you'll be able to select any part of what you're working on and then move it around just as you saw in you know in what photoshop was doing here so you can be able to drag and move any objects or layers around so what i did was you know adding this image to a new layer if it has been that i added it to this same image without creating a new layer here then that means that i will not be able to click and drag so let's take for instance now if i delete this there's nothing to drag here you can see what photoshop is telling you because there is no new layer yet that you know you can be able to drag and this current one that we have if you look at it here it's locked so let's say this is unlocked now so let me try to just unlock it and click on this lock icon so you see that it is unlocked so when i come back to this move to back so and then i drag you can see that you know you're now seeing an empty you know an um space at the background now so let me just undo back and then so to undo you can press and control z or command z on mac so i'll just undo and then i can be able to go back to where it was locked before so let's talk about some basic tools right so um we have the move tool so when you right click on photoshop on any of the tools depending on what you say so let me highlight this and see you can see that on this move tool there is a small arrow 
right that shows that there is more than one tools that is currently on this you know part of the tool so what you can do is to right click and then you can be able to see other options of the tool so now this is the move tool so the second part is the add board tool which you know as time goes on you get to understand that part. so we have add boards on photoshop so now um let me just close the highlights so we have the and uh, rectangle marker tool so the rectangle marker tool what it does is that it can create you know a selection around an object and then you can be able to move the selection around right so this is what marker tool does so we have if you right click on that we have the elliptical marker tool which can create the overall shape so you right click on it click on the elliptical marker tool and then there you go you can be able to just click and drag on any part of your image to make a selection depending on what you are doing or what you're working on so um for this now we have you know, the uh, lasso selection tool so what does lasso selection do to does is that can be able to click and drag and move around to any parts and once you release it's going to close you know going to bridge the uh selection to, to anywhere you've dropped it so this is also useful when you are trying to make a manual selection on an image you know you can use elliptical or a rectangle tool but this part gives you option of you know having a free and style of selecting any part of your image so what i just do is just to click and drag my mouse to be able to make selection so and once you click outside of it it's going to deselect but when you click on this and then you come to this part and this top uh, menu can be able to see where you have the add to selection you have the subtract to selection and then you have the intersect so as time goes on you can play around this to see how this works so when i choose see you know add to selection that means that any part i make on is going to add to whatever i have here and if i choose the you know the surprise selection too it removes any parts of where i'm making selection on so that is how the you know this um the free and or you can call it free and or lasso you can see that it says makes free hand selection so it's a lasso tool and the command is l so in each of these tools bars you can just go around check and then be able to see what each one of them does so let's make look at one of it again let me see you know we have the object selection tool we have the crop selection tool so this crop is also very useful so you can be able to make let's say for instance i'm trying to you know crop around this image probably i want it to you know be like more of a closer shot so what you can do is just to click and drag any part of the selection of the uh, crop tool which you can currently see so what i'm just doing is just you know click and drag in this part to where i want and once you are done you can either hit the enter and uh, button on your um, keypad or you can just double click with your mouse so then here you go here you have it so you can crop any part of an image out or in so that is what you know the crop tool does so then you have the frame tool you have the eye dropper tool so what the eye dropper tool as you can see is that you can you know sample any color of the image you currently have here or your background so let me create a new layer here so you can always create a new layer you can see you can hover around this button here you see create a new layer so there are many options here as well so we get to that later on in the tutorial so let me just add you know a new layer and then sample a color out of this part so let me just you know zoom closer so in order to zoom right so i'll be showing you some few shortcuts which can actually make your work to be more faster so when you press ctrl k on window or command k on mac so you are going to it's going to bring out the preferences and if you don't want to use the command let's say you forget the command you can always come back to you know edit then you come to sorry that's okay so you come to email edit and then come to preferences and then you can come to general so you can see what you have here is ctrl k so that was what i did at first so ctrl k or come to edit and then pick here so you come to an 
um, you come to tools so you have zoom you have many options here right so what the part that we are going to be looking at is going to be the zoom with scroll wheel so what this zoom with scroll wheel does is that you can be able to use your mouse wheel to you know zoom in and out of any image you're working on so instead of pressing because okay if let's say you just want to do it manually you can do the control plus or control minus to be able to zoom in or out of any image but to be able to use your mouse you can activate this by coming to you know these preferences and choosing this zoom with scroll wheel and then you see i have my animated zoom turned on so it always makes you know the you know the workspace nice and then when you zoom in it has this kind of effect that is animated when you zoom so that part so i had it turned on so i'm going to choose okay now so if i want to zoom in now i can just on my mouse right i can zoom in and then zoom out that with my you know scroll wheel on my mouse in and out i can be able to zoom so what i want to do now is to make you know just to show us what this um eyedropper tool does so when you click on the eyedropper you can be able to sample any color on the image let me say i you know wanted to just paint over a part of this image now like i need this color so what you just do is that on your on mouse you can left click and then you can see once you click that you can see from what you can see here that the circle that is made shows the part at which you are selecting so i'm holding down my left key on on my mouse and then just hovering around the image without releasing so you can be able to see the part of the image that is being sampled you can see so let me say i want to you know probably this part where it is you know where it is highlights now so once you release it's already selected and if you check and let me highlight if you come here to your background and foreground so you see that your set foreground is now the color which we have sampled from the image so um so let me just you know i'll be painting on this created new layer because what you have to be careful is that when you are trying to make edit on images if you still know you're going to be making changes it's best that you have any edit you are making probably depending on what you are doing right on a new layer so having this on the new layer gives you the you know an opportunity to be able to make changes to whatever parts you want to make changes to so which i'll be showing us here so we've already sampled a color so what i need to do is just to pick my brush to you can pick it from here or you can use b on your keyboard right to be able to make the brush too so and then i'm using you know the right brackets to be able to scale down my brush or scale up so you can see right brackets you know scales up and then the left bracket scales down the brush and if should in case you forget that you can always right click on the image and then you can change the size or if you don't do that you can come to this part where you have the brush and then you can drop down this arrow to be able to see the options and then you can change the size or you can either decrease or increase the size so let me just say that's what i want for now so let me make you know um, just a few so by clicking on you know your mouse left clicking on your mouse and then adding you can see that i've added some brush let's say i just want to add you know let's say i just want to add some pattern to this now let's say this is what i'm trying to add so what we have here is that we've sampled this part of the color you see that if you move it closer it's closer to the part that we sampled before so what i'm doing is to zoom to zoom in and out is my mouse wheel so you can always use your mouse wheel to zoom in and out when you're working so you can see now that this brush that i added right with my move to i can be able to move things around and then it's not affecting the image let's take for instance now what i did was a mistake now and i added my brush on the image so you see that on its own when you go back so when you go back to the move to you can always choose v to be able to go back you know on your keyboard just press v it go back to the move to so when i want to move this down you can see that i can't move it why because it is added on the background on the image itself
so that is what you have to be careful if you're working and then you still want to be able to make options or edits to any layers you've added always click them on a new layer so let me undo so to be able to undo you can press ctrl z on the window and command z on the mac so i would just like to undo so and also and um, let me just give you guys a little secret here so and um, let me just open the history panel so you see here in our essential it's already been added for us and a history panel so when you click on this you can be able to see all the edits that has been done depending on the number of steps that is you know that is added in the preferences of your photoshop so i'm going to be showing you a secret now so now you can see that from all what we've been doing so far we have all our history here so should in case you don't see your history right so let me just try to close this history panel so once you notice that you don't have the history you can come to window come to history so you can see it here history so and then there you go so you are going to have your history there so you can dock it to the part that you have before so if you want to dock it to the panel so you can just click on the history here and then add it to whatever part of your photoshop interface you want to so i want to dock it back to where it was originally before so once you drag it there and just release it's going to you know dock it to the part where you want it to so now let me just open down the history panel so you can see that we have the history panel to all what we've done so far so if you click on any one of them it can take you back you know to all the edits we have been making so far but this history panel has and was it called as limitation depending on what numbers of history states you set so there's something in photoshop that gives you the opportunity to be able to make your history to go as long as possible so you can say that okay I might be working on a kind of design and then probably i made a mistake which i need to go back to so you can be able to make sure that you have a history state that is a bit way higher than what you initially have on photoshop i guess the history state on photoshop default is at 50. so okay let's take a look together don't forget our command k or ctrl k so when you press ctrl k you can be able to quickly navigate to your preferences so now when you open your preferences you have the general you have many options here at the left hand side so let me highlight so you have many options you have the general interface workspace tools file handling you can see now you can see here history and content credentials so when you click on history and content credentials so you can be able to see options that are available here so let's come back to you know and uh, um what part okay tools okay uh general um file and lane history and okay let me just just trying to find where the options is here interface we have the interface here we have the workspace we have the tools we have the history and content credentials we have the file handling and we have exports we have performance so beautiful so um the performance tab is where you find your history states so let me make an highlight so you can be able to see very well so if you come to this part you can see that the history states that we have is 1000 so i initially set this myself right so this was you know you can go as much as possible so i guess the maximum is 1000 i kept it as maximum 1000 i guess the default value is 50. so when you are working on any image design whatever you're working on on photoshop if your value is set to 50 that means that you can only go back 50 steps to where you've started before so and there are some times that you might be working on probably a design and then you've gone so far that you wish to undo back to a particular level and then you are not able to get that back the reason is because the history state you've already reached the history state so it's best for you to have a higher value so that you can be able to go back to whenever state or wherever state 
you want to navigate through when you are designing so what i did is just you know you can input this manually you can just set to 1000 or you can make any edit probably 500 so mine is set to 1000 so i can go back 1000 steps to what i've been doing before and sometimes i i don't even reach the 1000 to be sincere so but just to have a in case you know i want to go back to the history states so and then you can choose okay so um i believe we've okay so let me just quickly talk about you know part of you know the some few you know tools that might be very very useful for you so let me move to we've talked about the move we've talked about the crop tool so we've talked about the eyedropper so let's talk about the clone stamp so if you navigate on this toolbar now you can see we have clone stamp and you know this clone stamp has a a very you know it's very essential right you can be able to clone any part of your image to another part so let me click on the clone stamp now so in order to make use of clone stamp so you need to click you know you need to sample a layer before applying it to another layer so let's take for instance i'm not sampling anything and i click on this you can see that photoshop immediately alerts me that oh be careful guy so you are yet to make any selection because you could not use the clone stamp because the area to clone has not been defined so in order to define the layer you want to clone you need to alt click to define the source path so what i need to do is to alt and then click any part let's say okay let me just make sure that this can be so obvious let me click the part of the eye so you can don't forget you can always increase your pore size by right or left bracket or you can come to this brush and then increase this size so now i want to increase the size now okay so let me now sample the eyes alt click you can see and then click on your left click on your mouse holding down your holds and then release the alt so now you can see without clicking anywhere you can see that i've already sampled the height of my subject so depending on where i want to paint this now i can decide to just let's just you know play around there so see now so depending on how much left click and click on any part of your image it's going to be painting starting from where you know you picked your you sampled your image that is the part at which it starts painting and then you can see that as we move along there is a target icon like a plus icon that moves along so you can see that that is the part it's currently sampling you can see that it's currently sampling the other layer too so you can see so this is what we have the more you keep painting the more it keeps sampling the other image parts at which you've initially cloned so that is it for clone stamp and clone stamp is always very useful let's say a, a, a photographer right you are working on a part of an image that is damaged or a part of an image that you want to clone so you can you know quickly navigate let me scroll to that see how powerful it is so alt click and then click on the part that is you know similar to where you want to paint over so let's say i want to erase this part of the image let me highlight so you can be able to see very well let's say i want to erase this part of the image what i need to do is to sample a layer close to the part at which i want to take off so when i click alt and then sample the cleaner part of this place then i can come back here and paint on it you can see so all those parts is gone now because that this part is clean so you have to be very careful to make sure that you are sampling the highlights of where it's close to where you want to take off because let's take for instance now you can see that it's very obvious that that part i did was obvious because it was not so close so let's say for instance i want to do, make it less obvious you can see alt click and then sample a part you can see that you can know that anything was done on the image now that is how powerful you know the clone stamp is so let's look at the you know we've discussed on the and paint tools let me click a new layer here at the new layer so i can be able to show so we've discussed on the brush tool we've discussed on you know we have the pencil tool we have the color replacement tool we have the mixer brush so for the clone stamp as well you have the pattern clone stamp so let me discuss a powerful tool here on photoshop because this tool has you know been useful for me a lot so this is uh, the healing brush tool so this healing brush tool, what it does is closely related to what the clone stamp does but the um you can see that we have the one first one is the spot brush 2 we have the brush 2 we have the patch 2 
we have the content that we have moved to so i'll just be focusing on this healing brush tool and the patch tool both of them so let's first take a look at the healing brush tool so i'm going to undo back don't forget that our history state is here we can always go back to where we were before so let me just go back to when we had these two dots on the face right you can see that i can come back here and then see that the, you know from the history state i can go back to where i was before or i can initially go back to the beginning so what i want to do is to make use of this history brush so what this brush does for you is that it helps you to sample a layer you know we were talking about the clone stamp that you need to sample a layer that is closely related to the part that you want to clean but in any brush tool now this healing brush tool, what it does for you is that it automatically does that for you so when i click this now you can see that it takes off you know at the pimple on the face now you can see so just by the clicking without needing me needing me to you know sample the layer or anything so it's already sampled the layer i can be able to just you know left click on it and can be able to take off any part at which i just want to let's take on to remove this you can see so let's say i want to take away this and you know you can see i just need to left click and then it does that you can see that my healing and what's the my history and panel is open down here you can see that the more i make edits the more it add to the history state so i can be able to go back to issue in case there's a mistake or something i've done mistakenly and i want to revert back so i can always go back to where i was so you can see now so that is how powerful the healing brush tool is so let's now look into the when you right click again you can be able to get more options so let's look at the patch tool so the patch tool is closely related to clone stamp and then the healing brush tool so what this does is that instead of me to sample the layer what i just need to you know draw around any part at which i want to be able to you know make changes to and then drag it to a part which is closely related or where you know the probably let's say it's it's a death right let's say there's a death on the face now and then we want to you know take off the death and then be able to um what's it called to take off the death and in order not to sample that so what you do is that you click and drag this to any part of the image that has the cleaner part at which you want it to look alike you can see what it did so let me make it more obvious let's say this part here i just click and drag and then draw around where i want and then what i need to do is i will drag click and drag this to any part that you know works best for me you can see though it's obvious that you did something there so what you have to be you know careful about this tool is that you must make sure that where you are selecting right it's very much related to where you are dragging it to except if you have you know probably you are trying to make something so let's take for instance now if i click this here now and then drag it here you can see what it does so it's as you know it's already feathering out the part of the image so that's what it does right that is you can be able to understand how it works on the face as well so let's say it is just probably this part of the air here that i like i can be able to drag you can see so that is how you know the alien brush to work so this is helpful should in case you're a photographer or a designer just walking around and then trying to make the edges of some image let me take instance for this now i can click around this and drag it you can see it's less obvious because i've zoomed near and i can be able to sample the image very well you know click and drag any part and then just drag to any part that is you know has the cleaner plate at which i want to make changes so you can see that it's less obvious than anything was done on it so as much as these tools are powerful you have to be careful on when and how to use them so um now so we've talked about you know all these you know images and then the tools so i believe by now you should be able to get yourself familiarized with many of the tools right so um so let me also mention go to some of the tools here so in this tool also we have many tools like we have the eraser tool we have the pencil tool so what the eraser does is that you can be able to erase any part of your image you understand that you do not want so let me create a new layer on this right so let me also unlock my background which is my image so you can see that let me just try to apply a color so you can pick a color from here and then you can see that when you sample a color this part let me highlight when you sample a color from here it's going to take effect on your foreground 
or you can click on your foreground and then choose from the color presets and then you can be able to choose what color you want or you can input the x value of the color here so i just want to paint i want to show you something here that you can use your eraser to do so let's say for instance let me just paint this part blue so what you can do is that instead of creating a new, new layer i can come to create new fill adjustments you can create a new fill adjustment and create a solid color so and then you know you can choose the x value also let me just add the color and then um so you can see that from here now our layers the first layer of our solid is covering our image and the reason is being that layers are just like stacking you know items on each other so the items that is up will be the one to show right it's just as if you are putting your right palm on your left palm when you put your right palm on your left palm right the left palm is going to be the one below while the right palm is going to be the one above that is what is currently happening here so what you need to do is to click on the new layer which you added and then just click and drag beneath the image layer so you can see right now that you know our image is now at the top of the solid color which we added so what i want to show you is to just show you how powerful you know the healing rush toolbox so what i need to do is that let's say i want to erase directly on this image which sometimes i will not advise you to do directly so let's say i just want to make you know erase on this image now i can choose my once i choose my eraser so you can see that you know eraser to there are many options from you know the eraser tool is just works with the brush tool because you have to paint do you understand so now once you click on the eraser tool you can right click and then you can be able to get options you have the you know this is the soft round brush and then you have the add round brush so i'll choose the soft round brush so i'll show you the difference between both so when you choose the soft round brush and then you erase you can see that what is happening is that we are now seeing the layer which we added below our image showing up so that is what the eraser does to the eraser as it speaks is you know erases any part of the image which you are you know you know clicking on or which you don't you don't need or you want to make let's say that wanted to make a nice design and then you now once we erase and then yeah. so there are parts at which you also need to change the opacity of your brush so you can come to the opacity and then reduce the opacity so when you reduce the opacity it's going to reduce the level at which the intensity of the brush is going you can see that before when i click on any part of the image almost everything is taken out but now when you click on this image it takes them out gradually and the more you you know you click on it the more it take out the image so that is what the you know the eraser brush to does so and then out of the eraser brush too we have we also have if we right click we have the background eraser and we have the magic eraser so as time goes on you get to understand all what this does so it's just for you to get yourself familiarized with basic tool on photoshop and i can be able to get started and start working with photoshop so let me go back to my move tool and then you know you can always go back on our don't forget our history status here you can always go back and click on this image to go back to where we had the original image before so um i believe we are you know you're getting to understand how effective all these tools can be so let's look at some of the tools again we have the smudge brush we have the dodge and bond so let me take my image to this side so you can see it very well so we have this smudge too we have the dodge and bone we have the paint too so we are going to be moving on this later on so i know we are done with the module one so we are going to be moving into the module two where we are going to be talking about the basic photo editing so i know we've actually gone over some of the tools which i mentioned in this part of you know the module two we are going to be talking about the basic photo editing tools so we are going to be talking about how you can resize and crop which i showed you earlier and you know so in this you know part you'll be able to understand how effective you can be able to make and maximize some tools based on what you are doing so now we'll be talking on the module two. the module is going to be 
and the basic photo editing so let's go into that now so um as we started earlier we can use our image so what we first need to do is that in basic photo editing steps right um and there are some things that you might want to do on your image which probably you're working on the design and then you're trying to you know make use of some some parts of images or some document which you need to trim down to what you want right so this is going to cover that part so before then i would also like to show you you know um how you can be able to create a new document creating a new canvas because that is the first thing you get to do when you're on photoshop most especially when you are working on a particular size so every document at its own dimension this image you are currently working on at its own dimension you understand so when you click and drag an image into photoshop it comes with the original dimension that the image was in automatically so let's take for instance now that we need to move this image to a new document so the first you need to do is to know how you can be able to open and create new documents so let me show you this part now so in order to create and open a new document remember we have our menu here so we have the file we have the edits we have the image and so many more you know um options bar that we have here so in order to create a new file what you need to do is to come to file and choose new you can see so the short code is Ctrl N on Windows and Command N on Mac. So um, you can see here from this new document panel, when you choose new documents, you have different, you know, recent sizes, which I worked on before. And then you can see the sizes here. And then you can be able to just based on what you've done before, you can be able to see, but you know, many of the sizes here. So there are also Photoshop also give you options to be able to choose from the pre-made sizes. Let's go to photo. So when you move to this um, bar here, yeah, if you click on photo, you'll be able to see Photoshop will give you some options. Like we have the seven by five inches with 300 PPI, which is point per inches. So you can you see the three by two, you see the six by four, and you can see the seven by five so you can navigate to print and then you can be able to see different sizes which are available like the letters and then so for this now we are going to be creating our own size ourselves so what we need to do now is to come back to where we were before so you can be on print and then still customize the size you want so no matter where the you know menu you are on you can always go back to create your size so let's say we are creating this for an instagram you know, design so you already know Instagram is and um, 1080 by 1080 so what you need to do is from this width and height first thing you need to do is to change your units so if you click if you see here you have beside the width we have the inches which is the units so you need to choose from any of the units we have pixels we have inches centimeter millimeter points and pickups so we're going to be working with pixel so as you know and um, uh, Instagram um, post version is 1080 by 1080 and then we also have the uh, 1080 by 1350 why the version is uh, 1920 by 1080 so for now we're going to be working with 1080 by 1080 so you come back to the height again you have the 1080 so always keep your resolution at 300 for a maximum quality because this resolution matters a lot you might notice your own might be 72 pixels per inch but make sure it's at 300 so the higher the resolution the more quality that you have when saving out your picture so and then the color mode is set to rgb color and then to 88 bits right so the white background is here so you can just click create so once you click the create right you can be able to say that you know the new document has been created now so that is you know what you you know get to understand and once you click on the create and create menu you can be able to say that your file has been created so this is a new document 
you understand so this is a new document now you can be able to do anything that you want to do on this new document you can be able to add text you can do any part of you know what you want to be able to work with so um so this is part of you know creating uh new documents uh so you can be able to change the settings if you want to so let's say now i want to open a new image so there are two ways that which you can open new image on photoshop so the first is you know you um come to file right you can come to file and choose open which is control o and when i choose open you can navigate to any parts of you know navigate to the folder where you have and um, your and uh, what's it called so yeah let me just go to um uh, one of our folders here and uh, let me go to okay precious academy so let's go to the um 2023 yeah so let's have to tutorial file. so we have we i had our image so you can click on any image let me say i want to open this image and then click on the image if it is more than one you can as much as possible you can click on your control and select among the images you would like to upload and if it is more than one you can just click from the starting and then hold down your shifts to be able to click to the end of where the images are then you can be able to make a selection around it or you can just click and drag your mouse to be able to make selection so for now i'll be opening this image here. so let me do open so it's going to load our image to a new canvas which the original image already has so that is the part so let's say you want to you know use the second option the second option is available for you to so click and drag your image into so let's say i want to drag this image now so let's say it's this image i can click and you know drag down to where my photoshop is it's going to open up i can drag into the document and then you know move it to wherever i want to have it don't forget if you put it on this image it's going to add this image to the document size we already have but if you click and drag it to outside of the image it's going to create its own layer you see so let's take for instance now you wanted to drag out and then you made a mistake let me show you so you just click the image and then you wanted to drag so you know you can drag this image you can see so it's going to add the image to already open document so make sure that you know if you intended to add this image together then you can do this way around but if you want to add the image outside to have its own uh you know to open its own layer then make sure that you are not putting it on top of the documents which you already opened so i'm going to be the going a step back to have our original image so that is how you, you know, open images on Photoshop. So now let's go to the cropping, which I mentioned earlier. I've showed you how you can be able to choose any desired, you know, aspect of your picture. You can crop to just, okay, I want a closer shot here. You can use your crop tool to do that. So that is, you know, a um, part of cropping out your images and then we have you no know, in order to be able to uh do what's it called and resize your image to any specific size so you can be able to do that let's say for instance now i have a specific size in mind i want this image to be on so once i'm on the crop tool you can see that we have the width height and resolution so i can choose to say okay i want this image to be in you know the pixel we mentioned before which is instagram so let's say i want it in 1080 pixel by 1080 pixel with 300 so i have to put in my width here 1080 by 1080 i will come into let me highlight so you can see so i enter yes into the second box which is the eyes 1080 by 1080 and then in my resolution i have my 300 so you can see now that you already have perfect square do you understand so you can choose to move the square around to any area because it might be here so you can choose to move the square around to any part at which you want the image to be and once you are you know once you reach your desired 
you know aspect of your crop you can choose the enter or double click with your mouse you can see now that the image has been resized so if you press ctrl 0 or command 0 you can be able to you know zoom closer to a, the perfect frame of an image of all a document so you can do ctrl minus ctrl plus or ctrl zero to be able to have a perfect you know um preview of your image it shows all the documents it shows the perfect exact exact images or document size which you add so that is that so it fits in the image to the screen which you already have so that is what it initially does so you can see that the image has been cropped to the set size which we have it here so that is the part of you know cropping images and then be able to choose depending on what you know you want the image to go for that will determine on what you want to do so um so let's say um let's now move into the part of color correction so one thing that you also need to know on photoshop is that there are some times when you have to color correct your images and then add some adjustments so here we are going to be adding just a basic color correction to this image right so let's say i want to color correct this image so i can come here to an um, image right choose adjustments and then you can be able to see different color adjustments that is available for you there are many shortcuts to this which i'll be telling us so you can see levels is ctrl l if you're adding curve is ctrl m and then you have saturation control so you can be able to read through should in case you don't want to you know you can be able to save some time working work faster when you know some shortcuts so now let's say i want to add you know um a color balance right let's say i want to add a color balance to this image what i need to do is just press the ctrl b or go to the image adjustment and color balance so here you have different you know scale of what parts or what field you want your image to have so let's say you know i want to um add more red to this image now so what i need to do is to click on the slider let me show you so on this slider you can be able to drag and then you know increase based on the levels at which you want to add extra tones to your image so let me see you can see be able to see the effect on the image so you can see so you can see when you take it to the extreme where this is what you have and then when you go back to the slider then you have this part so let's say i just wanted to have a bit of you know glamour based on you know and you need to understand that retouchings are also done based on what you're working on let's say for instance i'm changing this background now putting it in a new background and then i have to balance the color of the image to the background so that is when all this color balance comes in so that's why it's name case color balance you can be able to balance the image to the background or balance an image to what you intended it for maybe make it more you know kind of you know feel that you want depending on what you want to create or what effect you want to achieve so that is where color balance comes in so there are a lot you know whole lot of videos on color balance and then you can be able to know different things that color balance you can be able to use color balance to do it's a very powerful tool you understand even sometimes you might have finished a particular design and then you want a few kind of you know an amazing look to it you can play around with color balance and then you can be able to see different parts at which the color balance can be a whole lot easier for you so let's look at you know brightness and contrast so and um, let me show you also let's say for instance we have an image that is that let me go to our adjustments let's go into the um brightness and contrast so you can be able to see it in brightness and contrast you can from the slider here you can be able to click and drag your slider you know to be able to see and adjust your image to fit in depending on what you want to achieve you understand so all these things comes in when you are trying to make a composition when you are working on a design or you are working on a manipulation all these tools comes handy right because it's not just only going to be one tool you're going to be using it's going to be layers upon layers of adjustment and then till you get what you 
desire to see so let me just mention some of the you know essential tools that you, know, you might be able, you might need to use day to day so part of it this is going to be the um curve the curve so the curve tool so the curve tool you can go to image adjustment and can be able to see uh curves you can see so it's control m or curves so you can be able to just come to here and click on curves so you go with the command you can see here we have a curve so all this works is that when you take this scale and then you click and drag up it has highlights like it brightens up the image and when you take the slider and take it down it darkens the image so there are sometimes you might be working on the design and then you notice that probably the image is kind of flat to what you're working on and then you want you know you want the tones you, you want the highlights and then the dark tones and then the and um, what's it called the lighter shades to you know pop out of the background or pop out of the you know composition you're working on so all these tools comes in handy so sometimes you know i might just make an adjustment to this point you can see here we have the output 252 we have the input 66 and then you come to the highlight part and then we you know just take this up. sometimes it's effective on image and sometimes it doesn't actually work so depending on what you're working on with timing how you need to make use of this curve too so and don't always forget you can be able to you know play around see what works and then be able to see how this color curves. i know there are a lot of tutorials that talks about color curves and then talks about this curves particularly and then you can be able to understand how you can be able to maximize the use of it and how powerful the tool is so for now so i'll just close this part now and then you know uh, so let's talk about another tool that is very useful for us in working on designs so let's look at uh, another one is levels so you can come to adjustment and choose level you press your Control l or command l so now what this does is also a bit related to what curves to does so what this does is that you can be able to take any of this slider to either add you know a darker tone or a lighter tone to the image so you can see here the more i drag the slider the more it goes you know understand so the more you take the slider the more in intense the image might be or the more washed out the image might look like so you can see that let's say i want to hide highlights i might just play around so what i'll do play around with is this here to add levels of you know and darker shades to my image and then this part to add you know lighter shades to my image so when you're making design this you know tools actually comes in handy because sometimes you might be working on you know on a, a very creative eye in a design and then you notice that the image you are using is kind of flat and not matching this on its own can be able to make you know create a kind of levels to the image and make the image to pop out of the you know uh, of the background and make it and looks as if the image was actually made with the design so all these tools comes in handy with color curves color balance and then once you, you know once we get the point and be able to understand all what this does so um now let's go into the and um, layers right so i've already you know explained some parts of so um i guess so we've already understood how alien brush to work so don't forget we have the alien brush to alien brush to take blemishes away you can use it to remove any blemish on images you have the crop tool to crop your desired image you have you know the different tools which is eraser tools to erase any part of your image as well so in the module 3 we're going to be working with layers so i'll be you know showing you how you can be able to create a new layer you know rename layer and also delete any layer which you don't want so let's you know just go ahead with it now So to be able to add a new layer now you can be able to come you know you can come here where i told you earlier on let me take this here so i told you earlier on that you can choose when you come to this plus button here you can see here you can add a layer 
So once you add a new layer, you can be able to say that you've already added a new layer to the image. So what you can do is that you can also rename this layer to have, let's say, um, a brush. So once you double click on the name, you can rename any file here. You can type any parts, let's say, brush. So I might say, okay, this is brush. So I can pick my brush tool. Don't forget the command for brush is P. So you can be able to paint. And then you can see that when I come back to my move to back, when I click on this brush, so I'm on the brush panel, right? I'm on the brush layer. So you can be able to see that you can move the brush around. Why? Because you added the brush on the new layer. Don't forget that I mentioned that when you add the brush to an existing layer, which is not a new layer, you might not be able to have access to move the image around because it is applied directly to the image so if you have to be very careful there so that is it for layers and renaming layers so let's say for instance you can also make duplicate of this background layer so the command for making duplicate is ctrl j on window or command j on mac so you can see when you make a duplicate of the layer so you can see that you already have a copy of the image you made so that is how the layer panel works so that is it for layer panel so now um let me just show you some you know quick tips so you can be able to understand so from these layers now we have different and um, what's it called and modes in photoshop so they call them blending mode so blending mode is a powerful tool which you know helps or creates a kind of effect based on an image so uh, you know when you're working with blend mode let's say you know and um, mostly in creative design right you make use of blend modes a lot like you make use of blend modes a lot in terms of depending on the design you're working on let's talk about okay probably i'm making a flyer and then i have to make some part of it blue i have to so what the layer does is that when you click on just you know click on any of your layer and then you can see that i made duplicates of this layer let's see how this works now so what i'll do is i'll you know i'll go to effects filter and add an effect so let me just go to filter gallery don't worry you get to understand all these parts later on you can be able to understand now this brush so let me just look into um, the um let me see the poster edges now let me let me find the watercolor okay so let's see how okay let's use the watercolor the, this is a um, watercolor so you can choose so this is just like an example so don't worry about this much you get to understand how all of this comes together and how it works so what i want to just to show you is to show you how you can be able to blend two images together so i'm just trying to you know add let me see i'll prefer okay i'll prefer the cutouts so you can be able to see of how you know this part works right so let me just okay yeah we'll go over and then we have this okay so let me just apply so what i did was to apply the cutout filter to the layer which i duplicated which is ctrl j or you can come to you know a uh, layer and then you can be able to duplicate layer you can see duplicate layer when you click duplicate layer to ask you to name the layer let's say i just want to name this uh image three so i just do okay you can see that has added the image tree to this part right you can be able to see that has added the image tree so our layer so for now let me just delete one of them so to delete any layer you can press backspace or you can hit your delete key on your keyboard so i'm clicking on the image which we have let me add it and filter i'm renaming that filter you can be able to differentiate if i click and hide this right from this eye icon you can hide and unhide any layer so what i want to do is that you can be able to see that this is the original image this is the filtered image we have so you now be able to see how the blend modes work so we have the first thing that we have on blend mode is dissolve then we have tacking, we have multiply, 
you can see that it's margin let me just you know zoom closer so you can be able to see don't forget it. in order to zoom you can always hit your control plus or command plus or minus to zoom in and out or when you have set the you know preferences to be able to scroll with your zoom out you can always do that zooming in with your mouse wheel so now let me change this to lighting screen color dot you can see that from the different you know on what you call blend mode here it gives a effect and then blends the image to what we already had in the first image to what we already had beneath it do you understand so that is how it works even if it's screen it's a background you have beneath your image or what you're working on so the blend mode just try to blend two images together using the different modes that is available here so we have the overlay so the the most ones i use i use you know multiply i use overlay i use screen i use color dodge in and dodge so mostly sometimes you are working on a design and then you are making some manipulations or some abstract design so you can be able to choose or you are trying to add some glows to an image so i'll show you now so okay let's say you know i'm going for this overlay now so you can see that i've added an overlay so you can see now from this option so you see i've chosen the overlay what you need to do is to eat your enter key so once you are done use your enter key so you can see now so when you click and drag this image our filter you can see how it works right there. it's blended the first image we had filter to the one we had in the background so that is how the filter works so let's say for instance now you know um this is what i want to do so on this now i want to kind of have the image we already had to show more you can be able to come to this part that says opacity you can increase or decrease the image or the layer opacity so now for this filter now it's now set to 22 percent if you click on the background you will see that that still maintains it's on represent and it is locked the reason why you are not seeing these options is because it is locked if i click on this lock icon you can see that i can be able to manipulate the options that is available for it but let me not go back so now clicking on this now you can see that we've set our you know blend mode to overlay so depending on what you are working on you can play around with this overlay and see you know how it can be how effective and useful this can actually be for you so let's say um for instance now um so let's say for instance now i want to you know add a glow let's say this car that is here now you understand i want to make this to have effect more effect on the hand let's say i'm working on the creative design now so what i need to do is just to add a new layer don't forget you can always create a new layer here or you can press ctrl shift or ten. so that that is quite long right so just come here right or you can come to you can see here you can come to layer you can come to new you can come to layer so shift ctrl and so you can add a new layer so instead of you know this I, I also see this as a long way right so in order to be able to you know work effectively and then be time conscious just make use of every possible commands or shortcuts you know so let me say this is the new layer i want to add so now i'm going to be taking my brush to don't forget we talk about the brush tool which is b or you can navigate to this tool you know and then select your brush tool from here so and then i'm going to come to these options i'm going to be making the address to zero so that we can have the brush to be soft around brush so i can choose to increase or decrease the size so that is it so the brush right i can increase or decrease the size so what i want to do is sometimes you can sample a color don't forget to sample the color you can press i that is the eyedropper tool or you can come to your toolbar and choose from these options eyedropper tool so now i want to sample you can see i will sampling this you know yellow that is here you can see once you click on it it's already sampled it and added it to your foreground you understand and you can see it from this part as well that you have here you can choose to increase or decrease you can see that i want to just have it to be more intense do you understand so you can choose to you know um add more things to it more sheets 
so now let me just you know go back here now so let me add this new brush so what i need to do is just on my mouse click once if you click twice then it's going to increase you know the intensity of the brush so you just need to click once and then here you go you can see that it's added on a new layer that is why it's easier for you to be able to move this around if you add mistakenly add it to if the fifth layer make sure that you know you add it to a new layer so you can have more options to be able to manipulate and make use of this as much as possible so now we've added this new layer so what i'm going to do is to scale it up you understand you can see so what we need to do now is to change the blend mode so let me come to normal you can see come to this blend mode and then choose you know screen so you know when you're working with effects like this right screen is always a good option so when you're trying to create highlights you understand so there are many options let's take for instance now you can see that it added you know a kind of blue to where the car lights was the headlights was and then you can see that it's having effect on the end as well as if it was right there do you understand so you can see here and if you want to make duplicate you can always choose ctrl j or command j so ctrl j i want to make another duplicate of the layer so you can see that the more you have it the more intense the and what's it called the glue is but i'm not adding it on top of it i want to add it to the second car light you can see though obviously this is too much right so what you can do is to reduce the opacity and to reduce the opacity you can come to the opacity tab here on the specific layer which you are clicking on and if you are reducing the opacity for both layer you can always control click the second layer to make selection of both layers and then you can reduce the opacity to let's say 50 so you can come here and just change the opacity to 50 so that is it so um that's it now that this is looking more nice yeah so that is it for the blend modes and then how it works so now let's talk about how to group layers together so what you need to know is that in order to be able to work more efficiently and more organized it's good to arrange your layers to where it belongs let's take for these blues now we added to blue and then we need to you know organize where we are working so you can you know on your keyboard you can choose the shift key to select any layers let's say i want to make selection of these two layers i just need to click from the filter to any part of layer which i want to make selection of shift and then click you can see i've selected the filter and shift and click my layer one copy you can see now that you know that's added you know make selection of three layers together but before that let's name our layers this is our filter this is our uh, light effects so light effect let's just call it light effects so you can see that we've added that you can also copy once you double click on the name you can copy the name on this and then double click on this and paste so instead of you needing to type out again you can just have it there so you can just add this to light effects too so you can be able to organize your layers naming your layers will also make sure that when you're having a you know large list of layers you know this layer panel can get <laughs> can get more much more piled up when you're working on designs and then you have different layers different effects different things going on so and if you you know keep up with organizing your layers when you're starting out it's going to make your work much more easier you understand to be able to navigate to any particular place you are going so for now now we are going to be making use of the group layer so let me take the light effects and then holding down my shift key clicking on the light effects one and then pressing ctrl g on window or command g on mac so ctrl g so you can see now that this is selected once you press ctrl g you can see that these two layers has been grouped into a folder so should in case you forget the ctrl g or command g so when you click the layer you can come and scroll to the down parts of the layers panel you can see 
you have the create new group so once you create new group with the layer selected it will add them to the new group do you understand so that is how that works right there so that is how that works in order to keep your images your layers organized and then to be able to navigate around it anytime you need it that is the part of that so and in the module for now we're going to be moving into you know uh text and typography so i'm going to be talking about you know how you can be able to add text to your image so i'm going to be closing this image right here oh, we can just come to our history don't forget we added as much as possible so we can always go back to where the genesis of our layer so you can see here so here we go so this is our image right here so in order to add text to your image um you make use of the photoshop text too so in this test too we have different you know text all right we have the horizontal type too we have the vertical type too we have the vertical type mask too and then we have the horizontal type mask too so depending on what you want to do with determine which of the tools you need to make use of so but for now the most popular ones that you have on it is going to be the horizontal type too so now on my type too so let me just um um i have something to type so once you click on your type too just click on the layer you're working on so let me just add and um, type style so once you type the style so you can see that what you can see you cannot really see what you have typed because the size of the font is small so what you need to do is control a or command a and then come to this size you can see this where you have your font sizes and you can also see in the properties here you already see that you have your characters which is here so this is the current font i have raja familiar familiar fonts so what i need to do is to increase the size of my fonts so now i can just from this here i can click and drag to be able to increase you know the size of my fonts do you understand or i can come to this part and just enter this i can say that it is at 5.9 points so you can see it here so i can do it here too as well you can enter the size that you want you understand so you can always you know click on this and then choose the size sometimes you not see the point here we can always add the size at which you want and then after you've added the text then what you need to do next is just to come back to your move to and then click on the text so in order to move the text around you know so you can see from our layers panel that the text was added to a new layer so when you're adding text photoshop you know has made it simplified that it doesn't add the text to the image it add the text to its new layer do you understand so that is how the text works so you can see now that our text is in black color so let me just try to scale the text out more so you can choose from this you know so what thing is that the size is locked right you can always scale your fonts to the particular size you want so when you scale it from when you scale from this right hand side it scale proportionally so and also when you scale from the bottom to it scale proportionally that might not actually be the case for you so i'll be showing you what actually made it to be scaling proportionally so now if you look at this icon here the maintain aspect will show you see that it is locked if it is not locked when you make selection of this you will see that it's either it squashes your or squeezes your font do you understand which is not you know typically wise for you to do so but first let me change the color of this so you can see so you can see from this color you can be able to choose here right any color that you want and then it won't take effect on this because you have to change the text itself on the text color so what you need to do is you can see from 
this properties panel you can see color once you click on it then you can choose the color which you want for this case i'll be choosing white and then clicking ok so here we go so you can see now our text is in white so you can when you want to make changes right you can always hit your ctrl t or command t to be able to make sure you are on the text layer you can see make sure you're on the text layer and then ctrl t then you can be able to scale you understand you can be able to scale so you don't forget that i've turned off the aspect ratio so that is why you can see that it's squeezing together my font you understand that is because i have turned off the aspect ratio so what you need to do is press your escape to ESC on your keyboard to be able to go back to the default style it was before and then when you hit your command t or ctrl t then you can be able to lock the aspect ratio do you understand so once you lock the aspect ratio then anytime you're scaling it's going to be scaling proportionally so now let me now scale you can see no matter the part i select it's going to scale the image proportionally so make sure you always take note of that to not defect what you're working on so you can see so this is what we have here so let me just quickly make a mask around our image so that i want to take the text to the back of the image on photoshop and on the new versions of photoshop right they are you know it's it's which it's just way much easier for you to and be able to take out the backgrounds and images instead of doing the you know the manual where you have your pen tool and then you know so this is the pen tool where you have you need to select around the image to be able to take out your image so what photoshop does is that there's a new feature on photoshop it has been i guess it has been for past three years or so that we've been having this future right but we are using the older versions of photoshop probably but i know that starting from c and cc right you can use this this feature that is called subject selection too so what you need to do is that we have it here so this is the part of the tool so here you have object selection too so when you click on the object selection too so what you have is you know let me escape so you can be able to see so now when i click on this image you can see automatically it detects where my image is you understand it detects where the image is or when you click on select subject it automatically helps you to select the subject without needing for you to click on this or when you come to the select option here you can see subject this also does the same thing to select the image so what i'm going to do here is to select subject so it's going to help us to select around you know the image itself without needing for us to manually remove the background ourselves so it's it's currently processing let's wait for it beautiful you can see that photoshop did a great job you know sometimes you might notice that part of the you know image so let me just go back to my move to because that part of the images and missing out like i said the you know the shoes now part of the shoes are missing out so i can easily add that in by using my pen tool so but for now and um, we are not actually you know needing the parts of the you know we are not taking out the background we just want to add the uh, text our style to the back of the image so we don't need to worry about that so what we need to do now is to come to the uh, layers panel and come below it and click on the sorry let me just take this you know, got nothing so you can just click on the um add layer mask so what this does is that it's add layer mask of our image it had a layer mask to the image you for it currently make selection of so once i clicked on it now let me escape now you can see that has taken away the background itself so and remember that what we had intention of is not to remove the image itself from the background so what i need to do is just you know um make a duplicate of my layer don't forget you can make duplicate by ctrl j or command j and then in the layer beneath i will delete the mask so you can take off the mask by just 
you know dragging this layer mask let me zoom so you can see you can click on this layer mask itself not on this link icon this image itself and then drag below where you have the delete and then it's going to take off the mask or you can come to the properties tab and you will see delete so you can see that it has taken off the layer mask on the image we have so if you notice our the first one is still there the first one still had have the marks we had on it why so you can see that we only made duplicate of it and move the mask from the first layer so when i hide this the high icon when you click on the eye icon and then you hide this you can see that the image has transparent background so why it's showing background is because we've you know on we've reviewed the what's it called the first image to have is the original background since we uh, we also need this background and what we just want to do is to have our text behind the image now i'm going to turn on the layer visibility so by clicking on the high icon so you can see the style here so and then take the style behind the mask which we created yeah you can see so what this does is that you know the layer mask we made selection of is you know is already the image is already masked so we have an image you can see that when i unlock the mask when i close i just use my shift and then click on the layer mask to you know uh hide or cancel the mask when you click shift and click on it again it's going to turn back the layer on. so what this does is that it's it's we remove the background of one of the image and then send the text to go behind the image while the one beneath as the original background so i'm going to be turning off the layer so you can just see so that you know you don't get it twisted you can be able to understand so you can see now so let me just turn off starting from number one our layer mask this image is cut out of the background and then our text you can see that once the image is cut out of the background then we put our text behind the image and the lastly we wanted the background to still be visible so we added back the original image itself you see so that's that's just the magic so there's nothing to you know get confused about so that is how we were able to hide the text to go behind our layer so that is how you know adding and adding text to your images work and then so let's say i want to choose another font style for this right so you can come to the click on this and what's it called this style and then come to uh from this character let me be sure you're seeing what's easier so from this character you can drop down the menu and then go to any font of your choice because you know photoshop comes with some fonts already and some and it's not it's even essential because you are going to be downloading some fonts yourself depending on what you're working on with time the kind of fonts you want to add so you can see we have different style so let me just not turn off the mask you can be able to see how you know the different types of fonts can be able to work depending on you know what you are working on and the, the feel which you want to keep will determine the font style you are using so you can as well as just scroll down to find your desired fonts and then add it to what you're working on right so it's always possible for you to just you know add the images so i'll be providing these images for us really, to download and walk around just should, in case we want to follow along so that it can be able to be much more easier for us so that is the part for adding text to your layers so and also you, you can also transform your text in many aspects you can use the uh, control t when you use the control t right you can be able to make selection of your text and then when you right click on it there are many aspects of it you can you have the skip you have the rotate you have the skip you have the warp you understand so can be able to do many options or effects with that as well so that is it for you know adding text to your images so don't forget that you are free to play around check what works for you and then be able to you know understand how you can be able to maximize and then add different fonts to your image add uh what's it called depending on what you're working on that text to your images 
So, um, so what we need to be doing now is, and uh, what's it called? Um, the module five here we're going to be talking about uh, essential tools for graphic design. So, as you know, that you know this you know uh, tutorial is for us to be able to get our hands on making a nice design, getting us started from a beginner level to a professional. So that's why we are taking the time to explain all what you need to know, you know, on the tools on Photoshop so you can be able to know what does what and then you can be able to maximize those tools to use in your creative workflow. So in the module five now, we are going to be talking about pen tool. So because pen tool is very essential in terms of, let's say, for instance, now you want to cut out, you know, and Photoshop has made it much easier to remove images from background but there are some times where you are working on an image which when you make use of this selection tool you don't get the perfect selection for it do you understand so this part you are going to be covering some part at which you can be able to make use of pen tool to remove backgrounds from images and then you can be able to use shapes and parts and then you can be able to convert you know uh, all these shapes to um, what's it called? You can be able to work around shapes and stuff. So without just stressing much over time, so let's just go straight into it. So now let's take keep this right. So let's talk about pen tool now. Let me just add these two images and come back to our image. So let's say for instance now we couldn't get the perfect image that we need. So that is where this pen tool comes in. You can use pen tool to do so much many things. So we have the pen tool, we have many options when you right, uh, right, uh, right click on the uh, pen, you can be able to see pen tool, free transform and so many options. So, but the most popular ones you're going to be needing is the pen tool. So once you click, you can scroll and then zoom in. And then there's a particular tutorial which we had on how you can be able to remove and you know how you can be able to maximize the use of pen tool. So I believe you can also, you know, watch that as well. So take for instance now, so we are you know working on i'm trying to just click and cut around the image so in just few you know in some minutes we're giving you some major things that you need to know to quickly get around with pen tool first thing is that when you first click on the pen tool so you might first get the shape so when you click on the pen tool and then you are trying to make mask you see that instead of it to just have the transparency without the mask so what you instead of it to have the parts only you're having a shape the reason is because the shape is turned on. So what you want to do is that if you want to use to, you know, let's say you just want to make, probably you just want to make this free and shape, right? So this is where the shape tool comes in. You can make selection. Let's say for instance, I want to have this and then you can be able to just make selection of something like this. You will notice that all these layers are creating their new layer. Do you understand? You can see shape one has added its own shape two shape 3. I know this shape you can just choose any shape and you know change your color by just double clicking on you know you just double click on the thumbnail here and then you can be able to get the color options of any of the shapes and then add your, your preferred color so then just press ok so you can see that we've added a new color to shape 2 so that is how the shape tools work for pen tool so now let's look at you know um the part so the part is where it doesn't create any shape it just you know having only the parts without any shape do you understand so this is where it comes and the way you can be able to choose you know probably you just want to edit out the image you can create as many shapes as possible depending on what you're doing what you're working on and then you know so um for this now we're just showing you but now you can quickly be able to cut out images should in case you know you the option doesn't give you the and uh, what's it called the avenue to be able to edit your image so yeah i'm just going to be talking briefly on the pen tool so because you know just for you to understand how the pen tool i'm going to be deleting every layer you notice that this my pet now uh, what's it called the parts i added we are not deleting so in order to delete that you need to be on your and uh, what's it called on your and uh, pen selection tool and then you know backspace to be able to take off all those parts created so you can choose delete or backspace so it's going to take off the parts created 
so in order to maximize on how to be able to use your pen tool so let's say for instance now i just want to you know crop out the part of the body so you can start by you, you notice that you, you just might not actually start with having this and part that you know once you are making the selection around any subject you are seeing this effect of rubber band you can see this rubber band so it's called rubber band in photoshop you can see it doesn't if, if you are just you know, opening your photoshop it doesn't come this way so what you need to do to activate this option is that you will come to this uh, gear icon and click on the rubber band you can see so if you uncheck this now you notice that once i start making a new selection it just you know continues it doesn't show me the rubber band so and the rubber band is actually you know important for you to know which parts you are currently making selection to and where and what you need to do so i'll just click on the gear icon and put on the rubber band you can also see that you can switch the thickness but it's just best to keep it at the default value which is one and then you can choose the color so but i always love to just leave it at the default value i don't need to change all those stats so don't forget to click on the and uh, what's it called on the pen tool and then you can be able to click on the backspace to take out the made parts that is already on the image all right so let me just go back to the pen tool and then oh sorry I guess it's just my system all right so let me just click the backspace to take okay sorry so you need to come to the if you don't come to the pencil and click on the backspace it's going to take off the layer instead of the pencil so you need to come you need to make selection of your pencil you understand before you can take off the spots so let's take for instance i just want to you know let me say i just want to remove you know the parts of the leg right so let me say this is the part i'm trying to okay you can see that as much as i'm making selection now you can actually when you are let's say okay let me just make use of where we have curves so you can be able to understand how you know you can be able to maximize pencil so let's say for instance now you first make a selection and then you're trying to cut around the image so what you need to do is that you just need to uh left click and then left click and drag so let's say for instance now i'm working let's say i'm just you know um making and one of the clicks and then i'm clicking one after the other but in this wise it's not always a smooth click but there are options for you to be able to twist the clicks which you make so now i'm going to come let me just make it so look at this part now so let's say i want to make this selection it should be wise to be clicking this one after the other and make a selection around but here you can come to the part at which there is an angle that is equivalent to where you made selection to so this is what i do so now you can see that after clicking the end you can see after clicking the end of one of the angle i'm going to come to this part that is equivalent to it now what i need to do is now left click and drag out you can see you can left click and drag out the pen without releasing it if you release it you'll not be able to twist it around this way so you, without releasing the, my what's it called my mouse without releasing my left clicking can be able to just you know make it to face the direction you can see the angle to face the direction of where i'm heading so you can see so it has made a smooth curve in this area and then the angle which is pointing upwards it's the next part at which i'm going you can see so and you have to be careful about this let's say for instance now you probably made a mistake so um let me know so let's say you made a mistake and then it was like this and then oh you made a mistake so what you can do is that that is not the end in other case you can hold down your control on window or command on mac and then click on this part you can see and then point it towards the direction which is supposed to be you can as well holding down your control and left clicking and then move the shape around where it's supposed to be so and then twist the parts around so that is how you can be able to you know twist angles of pencil so that is it for you know making use of pencil so this is what i'm doing and also sometimes you might reach the end that let me show you now let's say for instance now i'm making the selection now so i want to end the cover i want to start another one here so let's say for instance now 
this part here so let me say this part now i'm making a curve you can see i just click and dragged out the pen so now you can see what it does it's creating a curve to smooth around the angle which i want to work so now you can see that now i want to go up and make another selection but this angle is facing this part so it cannot go if i click here you can see what it does so what you need to do is to alt and then click let me show you the part alt and then click the end of the angle which you just made so that is going to reset the point to have a new point so let me just click on this now you can see that it shows this um kind of an angle so what this is that is going to preach that part so you hold down your alt and then click on the points you can see so it has cut off the uh, this last angle so that i can be able to now make a twist of where i am going to so that is how that works right so you can be able to now you know move around cut the parts of the image you want to do so depending on what you're working on the image you want to do should in case the you know, photoshop is not giving you the options to do that so don't always forget you can always undo ctrl z and then come back to the part where you are on and then make proper selection so that is how it is and after let's say for instance now uh, let's say you are done making selection of this part of the body now so what you need to do is to come back and come to the without on your make sure you are still on the pen tool come to selection and then you come to make selection and then you can be able to choose your feather status so this feather status is kind of tricky it's you can set it depending on the resolution the image you are working on so let me just leave this at one and then you know it's going to be a new selection and then click ok leave the anti alias and then just click ok so what it's going to do is that it's going to make selection of the part which we made you can see it here so i can choose to make duplicate ctrl j of this and then go back to my move tool can see duplicate of this or i can choose to make mask i can choose to just click on the mask button that we have here so when i click on the mask so it's going to mask that part we just removed out so that is how you know removing images from background works so if you are removing images from background you know you have to cut all the body all around to get desire the results you want so that is it for that in mastering your pencil and get it started in making selection and then you know and just making sure that you you know you make the proper selection so now and um, let's move into you know uh smart objects so don't forget we can come back to our layers you can see we have as much layers possible you can always come back so let me just come back to the part where we had it you know our text and then yeah so working with mask yeah so i'm going to be covering this part because it's a very essential tool for us to understand in you know and working with mask and smart objects just as you know that photoshop is a raster program so um what that means is that the images are pixelated so all these images you can see here are pixels it is a raster so it is a raster program and sometimes when you're working on the document you want to make sure that you have a high resolution as much as possible so i'll show you you know what the rasterizing methods let me just zoom closer you see that it's made of of pixels you understand so each of the pixels you know have its own different colors and that is what makes the overall image so that is why it's called uh, you know and uh, for photoshop it's called a, a raster program so it's because it works with pixels so in if you're working with vectors and then probably you're working on um illustrator on corridor all those ones are vector you know programs so those vector program can you can go as much as one million by one million without losing a bit of your of of the file resolution but on Photoshop, you must make sure that by the first thing you need to do is to set the appropriate size. Because if care is not taken, if you make the wrong size and then you start working, you will see that most of what you're working are going to be losing in resolution just because the right size were not set at the initial stage. And then the images you are working on are not vectorized. So that is where we are going to be talking about 
vectorizing image so let's take for instance now this mask that we made now so um i'll be showing you just a bit so if i right click on this now on this image i can choose convert to smart objects so what convert to smart objects initially does is that it helps you to create a refined you know copy of the particular image which is converted to smart objects to keep and retain the layer style do you understand so that no matter the document size you're working on no matter what changes you are making on the present document it doesn't initially affect the layer style the smart objects let's take for instance now so i'm going to be do doing so so that we can be able to know the major differences now so you can see so let me just turn off this layer and then come to this layer you can see this image here right so i'm going to make a duplicate ctrl j or command j you make ctrl j so and then you right click on one okay i'm going to um right click on this one and come back to smart objects and then for this second one so i want to keep this one as well but we can always go back right so now i i actually made a duplicate and then made this into smart objects so what i did was to right click on this and come to you know and make smart objects you understand so you can see convert to smart objects so it's going to add this icon to your image so what we need to do next is this so let's see um and this is the image right so let's say i want to reduce don't forget we talk about cropping so the command for cropping is c so you can come here and choose your cropping let's say for instance now I want to take this image back to uh let's say 1080 by 1080 pixel let me go more further than that let's say okay i just you know wanted to crop this image and then i did this to the image first thing you first take notice that by the time you start you keep zooming let me hide this is on um, let me click non okay uh non smart objects and then this is the smart objects okay so when you hide the non-smart object when you hide the non-smart object you will see that this image right when i take this image you know and scale it down let's say i'm scaling this image down you can see when i say oh it's a mistake okay i want the image to be you know you know to be expanded more now so let me say okay you can see the moment i hit my enter key let's say for instance let me explain again to you so the moment i click and scale down this image and i hit my enter key this image has already take you know effect of the current state it is now so let's take for instance now if i'm needing to zoom this image out back now okay ah okay it was a mistake let me zoom it out you can see the image has already lost its resolution why because the image is not a smart object and photoshop is the raster program and it's pixelates image and depending on what you're working on you make sure that some of your objects which you are trying to retain same size are smart objects now let me show you the magic let me hide this non-smart object and now show you the smart objects you can see this smart object still has its size so let me say i want to scale this image down even smaller than the other one we had before you can see I hit the enter so you can see that this image has, is supposed to be losing resolution you can see what it happens now no matter how i zoom it down you can see this image still adds the same properties and the same quality it has initially why because we already made it to be a smart object so we make sure that some of the images if you are working on the design some of the images are set to smart objects should in case you want to you know expand the image or just bring it down a bit it's always in smart objects so that it can retain the layer it was before and then maintain a good quality so that is how the layer in the smart objects works so let me just go back to you know where we had it before we had everything all set okay so let me now show you how you can be able to you know make use of um the um what's it called uh smart objects so part of it is what we mentioned there so and also let me show you this you know important part of uh photoshop tool as well because you're going to be needing this 
so um so yeah. let's say for instance now okay you might have noticed that when i was working right when i was zooming in right i was actually zooming into a particular place so when you hold down your when you have zoomed in and then you want to go to a particular place on your and uh, what's it called on the on an image or on the document you're working on you can hold down the space bar you see that it's going to show the palm icon right you can see it shows the palm icon then holding down the space bar you can left click and then drag to a particular position which you want to you know move around so you can see on our smart object i can be able to let's say i want to move to this button i zoom in then i want to move around i can press down the space bar and then move around you know the layer to be able to see the particular part at which i'm working so that is how that works right so okay so let's just go you know into and what's it called the part of which i want to mention this rectangle too so we are in this we have rectangle to we have the ellipse to we have the triangle to polygon line and custom all these tools are essential should in case you want to add probably you're working on the design and then you want to add you know a rectangle to so sometimes you might if you click on the image it will bring out these options for you to set a particular size but now i want to do it manually so after clicking on the rectangle to i just left click and drag to a particular location i want to it to be you can see so that is where this comes in right so it's going to fill this up with color you can see what that did so i can now come back to my move to and then drag to a particular place i want or if initially i want it to be behind you can see i can always do that so behind the text can always do that and then remember that we already had the image removed or we want to have it at the back here so we can do as much as possible that we want to do depending on what we are aiming understand so that is where that comes in so we can play around with the ellipse to go to and then see how all those two works so all right um we're coming to the end of the tutorial so and the part that we're going to be looking at is to you know exporting and finalizing our project so let's see now we are done with what we want to do you know we are good to go we want to save out our image we want to save all the documents so there are many and what's it called and um, export options that photoshop has so the command to do that is you can save as a psd so when you save as a psd psd format means that photoshop you know um i, I get photoshop standard document psd so let me say i want to save when i hit my control s or i come to file or save right so um you can be able to say that the first option is going to give you is for you to save as a psd so you can save from the file option save as type so you can choose psd you can see that we have when you choose save a copyright you no know, the default value you have here is going to be photoshop large format psb photoshop pdf tif so the default is photoshop for now so once you need to do is that when you are saving out the file make sure you are also saving out the psd file and why that is very crucial for you to save out the psd file is that you must you know there are possibilities that you will need to make some changes in the design you just made or you might be needing some elements of some of the designs you already made so having the psd file gives you the opportunity to always come back to make any changes to the documents or to the design which you've already done so the first thing you have to do is to first save before doing save as first make sure you save this as a psd so what we are doing now is going to be you know this is the name you know this image we got it from on splash so let me say this is them just name this tutorial so psd so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to save so it's going to bring you know just going to save out for you you can see so it's already saving so you see the status you know below the document but now you know the image has been saved so now let's now talk about the other file format that okay we've already saved this file format that's with you know the psd file format that we can come back and make changes to this image anytime we need so the next thing we need to do is you know to um what's it called come to 
uh, file and then do the save as save as you can do control command s on mac or control no you can do shift command s on mac or shift control s on windows to save as so what i'm going to do is just control shift s if you understand and then and you know and what i need to do next is to come to this save as type right and then choose the file format notice that what we have here is the psd these are the basic so what you want to do is to click on save a copy so what you need to do is click on save a copy so it's loading the file now so it's going to bring more options for you for the file formats at which you need to export out so for now you can see now you can see that it has added copy to our tutorial so when you click click on the save as type now you notice that you now have way more options than you had before so you have the large formats photoshop you have the jpeg you have the png so for this option now we are going to be choosing the jpeg so you click on the jpeg then you can see tutorial copy and then click on your save so on the save options now you're going to see another option that comes out so this is the part where you set your quality so and depending on you see that in this part now you have the preview if you on if you don't if you check the preview you see the file size the estimated the estimated file size that you know this uh image is going to be the output is going to be so you can decide to have low you can choose the medium you can choose the eye and you can choose the maximum so for these options now i'll just choose the you know maximum or let me just i want to keep it you know but it's best that you just have it uh at the maximum or you have it in high quality depending on what you want so for this quality is not as if it's going for anything if it's going for print just within every other you know high resolution but i don't want it to be too large so i can just drag this scale instead of me choosing from this minute i can drag the scale to a particular amount i want don't forget that the lower this file size the lower the quality so you can always keep your file in the large file so let me just keep it in the scale of 12 which is the large file so and then i click my okay now don't forget we have the format options we have the baselines we have the baseline optimizer we have the progressive so you can just keep the baseline standard so just click on your okay and boom we are good to go so when we come back to our layers now and then we'll come back you can see our tutorial copy is here and then we have our image here so um that is um the end of you know um the photoshop for beginners plus i believe that you've been able to you know really understand every capabilities everything you can be able to get started in using photoshop and then you know photoshop is wide and then you can be able to channel your energy focus on some part at which you want to learn you're focusing on design then you need to dive deeper on you know different ways at which you can maximize photoshop and i believe in you know coming classes as well will be having aspect of this design parts which we are going to be covering on you know ways at which you can be able to you know probably design the flyer design a part of things so but this is like the foundation this is the foundation of everything that's going to be done because once you understand the basics when we are going through the tutorial of how to make this how to make that probably how to make a and what's it called a party flyer how to make a and what's it called a book cover how to make different aspects of design how to retouch a photo once you already know the basics right once you know the basics of photoshop it's going to help you to understand what and what the person teaching you is doing and how you can be able to get the most out of the tutorial so what i would advise you now is to familiarize yourself with all this you know uh, and what's it called these fundamentals which we've gone through together and also to be able to make sure that you you know understand every aspect of it so that in common classes right you might be able to understand and what's it called you can be able to understand 
how and what was done even looking at the design can be able to understand that okay probably this is what the person did this is what the person did so i can be able to not get intimidated by photoshop again and you know you can be able to know that okay now i'm you know i'm cool with photoshop i know what to do i know how to hack text image i know my layers i know these things i know this that because all these things are going to come handy you know they're really going to come handy when you now start working on real projects so i believe you've you know i know you've had a fantastic time you know and working together in working you through these fundamentals of photoshop and getting you started if this has been you know very helpful don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel because in coming days we'll be having different aspect of designs covering some aspect of you know photoshop that is you know very interesting and they can be able to understand so many aspects of photoshop so if this has been useful don't forget to share don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to drop a comment thank you so much for the time have a wonderful day peace